Hi, this is Julie from Famicanic Designs. Today, I'm going to bring you into my studio to show you a few steps on how to make your lost wax casting at home or in a studio. This is a service I offer to my customers. I can transform their old jewelry into new pieces using the lost wax casting. I need to weigh and test the gold purity in order to make a quote. And voila, we are on board to create a modern and meaningful piece of jewelry. Lost wax casting can shape cherished family heirlooms into modern keepsakes. First step, sprueing, making a wax tree. Take a sprue base with a thick piece of wax and attach your waxes to it with a pen. Attaching them to the top of the sprue is not ideal with many pieces, but for just a couple pieces it works really well and make sure to smooth out everything. It is important to avoid sharp corners. Make sure your pieces don't touch each other and put the cylinder on. Next, calculate how much investment you will need to fill your flask. Don't eyeball, use a scale. It's best to use distilled water. And for my type of investment, I only have nine minutes total to work from the mixing to the vacuuming. You need to be quick because it will get hard and trap bubbles. I start by using a whisk and then I move on to a grout mixing paddle. I mix for about one to two minutes max. You then move on to the vacuum chamber. You need to leave it there for about two minutes. While it vacuums, I add some tape to my flask in case it overflows. You fill the flask and you need to extract more air bubbles. Let's do another round of vacuuming for about one to two minutes. When you're done, you need to leave your flask unbothered for two hours. What I like to do next is to steam most of my wax off for 45 minutes. I then prepare my kiln to the proper setting I have programmed for a burnout. Don't forget to ventilate. I have a homemade uh, particle and charcoal filtering system. When the kiln is near 300 Fahrenheit, I put the flask in. There is a ramp up from 300 to 1350 degrees and it takes about 6 or 7 hours. The void will be soon replaced by gold. While I wait, I take my vintage piece of jewelry and I weigh it. I need to figure out how much more gold I will need in order to fill the gap. I know from experience that I will always at least need 10 grams for one piece. I started melting my gold in the furnace, but was worried I did not have enough metal. I then added a bit more of 10 carat. Use separate mixing rods for each metal color. Same for your crucible. And don't forget to add a pinch of borax to coat the crucible. It will also help having a clean mix. This type of casting is called vacuum casting. Some jewelers will use a centrifuge system. When the burnout is complete, the kiln stays at 1200 degrees. That will be the best temperature to pour the metal in. I make sure the edge of the flask is clean. It will need to be airtight. When the vacuum pump hits its maximum pulling strength, I pour the gold in. Wait for the button to cool off a bit before quenching. You don't want to create oxidation on your piece and you don't want to weaken the structure of your metal. It is a pretty intense thermal shock. Wait a few minutes, then quench by submerging the flask in one quick motion. It is now safe to clean your flask and fish for your casting. Here is a successful casting without air bubbles and a perfect flow. Oh, it's always so stressful to me. Next day, I clean the excess investment with a brush and put the pieces in a magnetic tumbler for a clean finish. It makes the texture sparkly. I see better this way. It's like my pre-finish. I file, sand and shape my pieces. Now I need to prepare my ring for setting a 2.5 mm Canadian diamond. I do most of the polishing before setting the stone. I did not show the whole process of making a fit seat for the stone. That will be for a future video. I stamp my pieces with the 10 carat and my company's initials. 
Then I set the stone. I have a hammer setting tool and a magnifier that is super helpful for small stones. My nails are always a great tool too. I burnish the outside of the stone. I clean it and repolish. I added a jump ring to my pendant. Now let's do a rhodium bath. It is a plating over white gold to give it some shine and a neutral white tone. Rhodium is also a hard metal that helps prevent scratches. Make sure you clean and steam your pieces first. Use a gold wire to hang your pieces when plating. The first step is to electro clean before plating. Always rinse thoroughly with hot distilled water and steam between rounds. Keep your solutions away from dust and be safe. I rinse and clean again before touching it. Here is the result. This ancient craft of lost wax technique is not just about creating jewelry, it is about preserving legacies and forging connections to our roots and caring stories and sentiments for years to come. I thank you for watching and if ever you need something custom made, reach out, subscribe and see you in another video.